Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Child, Massachusetts. I haven't been here for a while, but I'm back again. Uh, next week, I'm hoping to do a bunch of videos. I've been super busy. I've been working on the English wheel. If Mark wants to pan over here, we're getting all the mechanism worked out. We got a big uh, order for all the water jet cutting and everything. And uh, I had a couple classes the, la the first, uh, the couple last two weekends, I guess. And Peter came for the class this past weekend and he had bought the 130 hour package. So he's been staying on until today was his last day. And uh, Peter's from Chicago. He's been to the class a couple times and he wants to develop his own uh, scratch built project. And he's a very, very good woodworker making rocking chairs and all kinds of nice uh, woodworking projects. He's been doing that for about 20 years or so and he wants to get into metal and that's why he took my class and he hasn't really bought all the tools yet and stuff but he's still investigating, he's taking his time tiptoeing into it and uh, the thing that really baffled him was how I did these drawings even though I've got videos on it and stuff he wanted to partake in doing one himself so uh, him and I worked two days we had uh, a few lines up there that uh, one of my volunteers and actually another student had started trying to interpret what I wanted uh, and uh, I wasn't really happy with it so we kind of basically clean slated the whole thing and we started from scratch and just the two of us and what we used was this little model here that I bought, it's a 118 scale model I got it on eBay, it was like $54 I believe it's a pretty good representation of all the Studebaker lines I have a collection of pictures that I've assembled, but we really didn't use the pictures. And one of the key uh, elements, I call it the Rosetta Stone, was that uh, I'm doing the, the Indy uh, race car, the 1931 Studebaker race car with Gary Ash, another student of mine. And he's really uh, wound into the Studebaker clubs. And he connected me with a guy up in New Hampshire who's got a bunch of Studebakers. And he just happened to have a 1937 Studebaker front fender and uh, it's severely rusted it's kind of thin and it's got uh, you know modeling all over from the rust and a few little rust outs here it could be possibly saved but it's it's very marginal but the good thing is it has all the nice lines to it and shape and everything so I was able to use that as the scaling uh, vehicle for scaling the whole car now, the, the original Studebaker, this is a 1937 Studebaker Express pickup, and I don't know what the production on them was, but it's one of the most beautiful 30s vintage pickups, I believe, and uh, it's always appealing to me. And a few people have uh, uh, street rotted them, and they look really nice street rotted. Well, what I didn't like about it was that the cab is very small, and the seat is almost straight up, and it's kind of tight in there. So I figured I was going to make the cab a little bit bigger, and I didn't mind messing with the lines. Now I'm just going to scratch build this entire car, and uh, I'm going to do it all in aluminum. So now I'm going to finish the, the Jaguar nose, and then go straight into building this Studebaker, and every aspect of it will be videoed, and it'll be up on my website, uh, my YouTube uh, channel, Pro Shape of Workshop. So Peter was invaluable in spurring me on to get this thing going because it might have been another two months or so. And uh, we just dovetailed as far as what we wanted done. So to have help and then he watched the whole process and participated in it. And not only did we, you know, copy the lines pretty faithfully, say like on the front fender is going to be uh, pretty, pretty uh, much this, the original. But the back fender uh, doesn't have enough room. They, these ran really narrow tires. So we actually uh, made the back fenders a little wider. Of course, you don't see it in this, this view. But Peter's intent to come to this class was to, one, learn how to do all the lines on the board, how to blow it up and everything. And then, two, to make a wire form. So in a minute or so, we're going to show you the wire form. It's got, we got started. And... Uh, I, I don't know if, if anybody hasn't watched my other video, the way this, this system works is this board is a piece of galvanized uh, sheet 
a uh, bunch of 4 by 8 galvanized sheet on a little three-quarter square, or half, I think it's half-inch square tubing, and it's all pop riveted together with flush pop rivets, so you don't, and this is Tyvek, which you put on a house. It's, it's very, very strong paper, and I found these magnets on eBay uh, probably 10 years ago, and it's the same thing as refrigerator magnet, and um, it's plastic with probably some iron in it that's magnetized. And it comes in a half inch strip, and I cut them in half. And then you can use them just like you do a CAD line. And um, now you see Peter has put the line in here. This is a magic marker line, so now I have a permanent record. But that's how we create the line. So if we put the line like that and we see the bump, we don't like it. We just keep straightening it out or put a ruler under it, and you get the straight line. And then to arcs, the same way. If you have an arc that you don't like, it's too much, too little, you just keep adjusting it, stand back, and it's a really nice, simple system. So I also have Mr. Adjustable in here. I made him years ago, uh, and uh, he has all these little wing nuts. And what I did was I want to make sure that this truck fits me. I'm about six foot three, and uh, I took that. I have a 2014 Chevy Silverado. And I took Mr. Adjustable out to my Chevy Silverado, sat him in the seat, put his hands on the steering wheel, his foot on the pedal, and then I tightened them all up, and then I set him in here. So that's how we got the seating arrangement and everything. And we've expanded the cab this way, I think about an inch or so, and a, a two, or, two or three inches this way. And we're going to expand the cab for the wideness too, but that'll come later when we start doing the wire form for this cab. And we've laid in a preliminary line here for a frame we're going to build. This is the frame. It's going to be a scratch-built frame. It's 5 inch by 3 inch by 1 8 inch wall tubing, which we'll cut and re-weld and get it all tapered and everything. And uh, we'll probably have like a Fat Man uh, aftermarket uh, uh, front end suspension on it, Mustang 2. And we might do a straight axle with regular uh, semi-elliptical springs in the back. That's all to be determined later. Uh, and it's going to be all aluminum body, aluminum floorboards, aluminum cowl. It'll have some steel inner structure. Um, it's all flat glass. We rake the windshield back just a little bit, probably you know a couple degrees. We rake that back. This Studebaker grill is an extraordinarily beautiful grill and uh, we're taking advantage of the beauty of it, but we're also raking it back a little bit to give it a little more racy appearance. And it's a, a originally a 115 inch wheelbase and we stretched it to a 117 inch wheelbase so we could center the wheels. The original, the wheels are offset towards the front a little bit in the wheel, in the wheel opening. So from this front fender, all these curves and, and basically from here back is the exact same fender shape as the rear fender. So that made the job of making that wire form for the rear fender a lot easier. And um, Peter uh, bent all the wires. I showed him how to do that. And then it's all MIG welded together. And in a minute we're going to show you uh, that. I've also got uh, the steering wheel in. I've got a cowl firewall cowl line in in the brake pedal position. Uh, we just threw some wheels in there to jazz it up a little bit. And Mark made a really nice t-shirt today and it should be up on our uh, Teespring showing this as the build. And uh, this will probably be uh, at least about a year long build or more. The whole long series on YouTube, but there'll be nothing left out. All the questions will be answered. Okay, so here's the rear fender for that 37 Studebaker Express pickup, and uh, I uh, gave direction to Peter, and he, I started out telling him to got to make a uh, some kind of framework to hold everything together. So I had a bunch of scrap one-inch square tubing. We cut that up and kind of migged it all together doesn't have to be really fancy or anything. It's just something to elevate it uh, off the bench so you can work on it easy. And uh, most of these lines were taken actually off the front fender and Peter learned how to bend. And the bending process is very simple. Um, we have this little bender that my friend Tom Lipton made for me years ago. 
and uh, I made one for Peter to go home with because he's going to be bending some wire. So I made actually a little bit nicer one than that. Uh, we might even offer them for sale now. We've got a lot of the stock and stuff. So uh, this is all made with quarter inch hot roll and uh, Peter had zero experience doing this. He bent all these himself. I showed him the process and what we did with this is because we're going to have a little bit bigger tires so we widen this out like about an inch and three quarters or an inch and a half or so and, and this still needs a little bit over here. The way this works is the bed of the Studebaker is uh, got a relief underneath with a little inner fender well and the fender slides under and it's bolted right here all, all along the perimeter. So we fattened it up a little bit to accept a bigger tire and uh, we, we haven't checked the continuity of all the, the flow of all the lines. That's done with a wire like this and there'll be some adjustment needed. We've got we to gotta check them all out to make sure that they all touch. If they don't touch, we cut them and move them out a little bit and re-weld them. And that's the beauty of the wire form. Uh, a lot of people get uh, fall in love with CAD and the scanning and I, I fell into that trap too. This is so much better because you don't have to have any of those skill sets. All you have to do is have a good enough eye to know that a line has got a nice curve to it that's, that's flowing properly. If you've got a little inconsistency in the line, you've got to straighten it out. So, and if you make mistakes, you just cut it, MIG weld it back together again. You got infinite variety of, uh, infinite uh, uh, variable factor to change things. It's not like you cut a piece of wood and, and then you're stuck with it and you have to get another piece of wood or something. It's so easy to modify these. And another feature of this, the Studebaker fender has a rolled lip edge similar to the Ford's. And that's very difficult to do other than hammer forming it on. Otherwise you have to stretch the edge in order for it to make it make the turn. So now that we've got this def wheel opening defined, we can get some half inch uh, steel and bend that into the same shape and just marry it on here with some MIG weld. And when we make the aluminum panels, they'll come down like this. You anneal that little section right there and then just roll it, hammer form, roll it right around that wire. So uh, it uh, will work really nice. So it still needs probably another day's work just to put this little extension on the back. And then also, it's see it's a little buzzy here, so we'll put some stalks coming over here and that'll hold it really strong. And uh, after that, it's just about done. So I just want to thank Peter for doing a really nice job, and if he wants to add a few comments, he can. Well, this is my uh, fourth summer here, and I usually come for about you know four to seven days at a time. I don't do, haven't done anything at home, nothing at all. And uh, having worked with Ray this this week, I feel confident that I can go home and uh, actually uh, make a wire form of a vehicle from photographs and from a model. I think it was a great experience. Uh, and it's a very nice, relaxed, casual uh, week. Well, thanks, Peter, and I hope to see you again. He says he might come back again next next year. There's always questions, yep. and you never never stop learning. So, it's Ray from Pro Shaper. Thanks for watching, and we'll be getting on uh, with some new videos real soon. Mm -hmm.